the May 9th County Council meeting to order. First item of business is uh, the call to order. And before we get into the agenda, I just think that it's uh, worth a moment for council to take a minute to acknowledge the hard work of the uh, fire crews, the water haulers, equipment operators, residents, pilots, farmers, and everybody, uh, air support teams, SRD folks, and administrative people who put in place emergency plans and um, worked uh, vigorously over the past uh, 10 days or more to get the Jackfish Lake fire under control and also the other the other smaller ones that occurred in the county. So I, I um, think that we need to acknowledge their their extraordinary effort and uh, and our appreciation for them. The uh, next item is the approval of the agenda, item number two. The items which must be discussed are, are will be on the table for discussion to begin with at least are item 5.2, 6.1, 7.2, 8.1, 9.1, 10.1, 11.1, 12.1, 13.1, 14.1, 15.1, 16.1, 17.1, 18.1, 19.1, 20.1, 21.1, 22.1, 23.1, 24.1, 25.1, 26.1, 27.1, 28.1, 29.1, 30.1, 31.1, 32.1, 33.1, 34.1, 35.1, 36.1, 37.1, 38.1, 39.1, 40.1, 41.1, 42.1, 43.1, 11.1, the heading 11.1 C, F, H, W, X, Z, A, 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 E, A, F, and then all of item 12. Absolutely. So on 11, the letters C, F, G, uh, C, F, H, W, X, Z, A, 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 E, A, F. And then all of item 12. Are there any other items? And I'll go over the whole list at the end again. Uh, from council, items that you, additional items you'd like to add, delete, or put on the table for discussion. Councilor Como. Uh, for 11.1. One C, I will have a written report submitted for the next council meeting. Any other items on the floor? Seeing no hands, the uh, items on the agenda for discussion are beginning item two, item 5.2, 6.1, 7.3, 9.2, 11.1, 12.1, 13.1, 14.1, 15.1, 16.1, 17.1, 18.1, 19.1, 20.1, 21.1, 22.1, 23.1, 24.1, 25.1, 26.1, 27.1, 11.1 W, 11.1 X, 11.1 Z, 11.1 AA, 11.1 AE, 11.1 AF, item 12 in its entirety, that's 12.1 and 12.2. It'll be in order to have a motion to approve the agenda. Councillor Holland? Prior to approval, um, I missed 5.1. 5.1. Councillor Holland, would like to add 5.1 to the agenda? Councillor Mins? I'll approve the agenda. Councilor Mins has made a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Is there any discussion? Seeing none and you're ready for the question, all those in favor of approving the agenda. That is carried nine and zero. So the first item of business then is 5.1. Councilor Holland, do you have a motion you'd like to make? Um, actually, I just had a question before the motion, if that's possible i was curious about is it if that's okay sure. i was wondering about um fcss with um help of the chamber or not the chamber the community futures if that's something that could be considered for this or if there's just not enough resources and time i believe the administration has a, a plan and i will ask the cao uh or potentially the cao or councillor wallach who are more closely connected to that item um, I'm unaware that FC or Community Futures would actually participate in this. Um, is there not a municipal partner or government? Uh, this is through Alberta government and the municipality. Um, if I may, I noticed this, the, and I don't know how it works, of course, with the cold light, but I just noticed in the uh, chart of what the other communities are doing, and they had a Community Futures, so I wasn't sure if that would be something available to us. Um, my my understanding, and the CAO can confirm this, is that the thought was the county doesn't quite yet have the resources in place to manage the workload that would be required, but that it's something the administrative team is is building to. Okay. And so, you know, on on that, yeah, yeah. And so on that note, um, 
Councillor Bullock. I move to the table any further action in the matter until the Re Regional Economic Development Committee is restructured and staff are in place to complete these actions. Okay, so the recommended motion is a tabling motion. There's no discussion on those. All those in favor? That is carried nine and zero. The motion is adopted to table that item. 5.2, the draft strategic plan is, uh, is there anyone willing to move a motion? Um, I would recommend before someone shoots their hand up uh, the idea that if you're planning to move the recommended motion to add the words by June, by a date, by June 30th, uh, along the, the line of strengthening the motions and creating some time boundaries on them when you make them. Councillor Holland. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to um, accept the 2023 20, 2026 strategic plan as information and to direct administration to cut, conduct a public and an online consultation as discussed by June 30th. Councillor Holland has made a motion to accept the strategic plan as information and to direct administration uh, to conduct a public and online consultation as discussed by June 30th. Is there any further discussion? Councillor Anderson. Thank you for clarification. Um, I believe online is considered public, but are we talking about an in-person and an online? Mm -hmm. is that was that the intention? Because is that, would there public be an objection? consultation could be online or it could be in person. So would there be any objection to amending just the language to say an in-person and online consultation? I, th I thought that's what I had said. Sorry, you online said public. And, uh, both. You said so, public though, so I to amend the so, word public to in-person and online. Thank you. Right. You're okay with that? Thank you. There's no objections at the table. If you're ready for the question, is there or any further discussion? Seeing none, if you're ready for the question, the question is on the adoption of the motion to accept the 2023-26 strat plan as information and to direct administration to conduct a, an in-person and online uh, public consultations as discussed by June 30th. All those in favor? That motion is adopted, uh, nine and zero. Oh. There were, um, just as we move off from that item, there are a couple of typographical errors that I noticed in there uh, that I, in spite of it coming to in front of us a few times, um, that I guess we'll have to deal with the next time we bring it up in front of us because I missed the boat. Item number 6.1 is the tax rate bylaw. Is there anyone willing to move a motion? Councillor Anderson. Thank you. I move first reading of bylaw 0042023 as presented. Uh, Councillor Anderson's moved first reading of bylaws 002, sorry, where we go? 0042023 as presented. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, if you're ready for the question, the question is on the adoption of the tax rate bylaw 0042023. All those in favor? Oh, uh, that is nine and zero. The motion is adopted. Is there anyone willing to move second reading? Councillor Cromwell has moved second reading of bylaw 0042023, the 2023 tax rate bylaw. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, if you're ready for the question on the adoption of the motion to move second reading of 0042023, all those in favor. That motion is uh, carried. The count is nine and zero, and the motion is adopted. Uh, it would be reasonable to seek a motion for unanimous consent to provide third reading of the bylaw. Councillor, uh, so Councillor uh, Kapitanik has moved that uh, there's a unanimous consent to provide third reading to the bylaw. All those in favor? And there is unanimous consent. The count is nine and zero. Is uh, anyone willing to move third reading? I was going to. No, that was unanimous consent. I was. I was going to go to the budget chair for that one. I'll go to that one. <laughs> Councillor Kapitanik has moved. Uh, budget chair counts. Third reading of the 2023 uh, tax rate bylaw, bylaw 0042023. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, on the question of the adoption of the motion to approve the uh, bylaw 0042023, all those in favor? And opposed? The count is eight and one, and the bylaw is adopted. 
the next item on the business was 7.3. So just as a reminder, we can't do three readings in one meeting without unanimous consent. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were already on the meeting. It's the amazing we're pace. So excited about it. It's the amazing pace we're working at. Because we did such a good job. Um, I, I put this on the agenda. Um, obviously, we'll move a motion, but if there's someone willing to move a motion, I added it because I just had some questions I wanted to discuss. Councillor Holland. I'll go ahead and move the a motion as recommended, please. Councillor Holland has moved the uh, motion as recommended in your agenda. I'll read it once before we vote, but uh, for now, the then the discussion um, portion. The... Um, for, for me, when I, I looked at the uh, the proposal, I have concerns that the that the county administration is being tasked with with helping third party organizations organize events, and would feel better about the committee itself coordinating their volunteers and doing doing that in the same way that when 4-H cleans up a hamlet or a ditch, um, a right of way of any kind, we don't collect volunteers, we don't organize them, we just pay them and off it goes. And so um, my question or concern was that, you know, why wouldn't the trails organization maintain a list of the volunteers? Because um, I'm not convinced the admin has a lot of spare time. And then um, secondly, because of the, um, I think the limited understanding for me of the relationship between the Athabasca landing Trail Steering Committee and the Athabasca Recreational Trails Association. I'm wondering, as part of the discussion, if it would be reasonable to council to have uh, one of those groups come in as a delegation and just kind of talk through who they are and what they do and what, how much good work they take care of in the region. Anyway, that was the question and that was my comment. Is there further discussion? You're the movers, you get to go last. Councillor Anderson, I mean, unless you're okay with that. Thank you. Um, I would be in agreement that the sending of the invitations and maintaining the list of volunteers and coordinating the volunteers would be the committee's responsibility. I have no concern with the advertising or um, supply of PPE and whatnot being done by the county. I think that would be very appropriate. I would also propose that the county would be responsible to send a crew out to pick up whatever bags of debris are collected and dispose of them rather than the committee trying to transport that um, and dispose of it. I think that could be something that the county could manage as long as it's all put in one spot. Kind of. If I may. Is there any further discussion? Okay, Councilor Holland. Okay, um, just for clarity, the this is part of the Trans-Canada Trail Care Grant, which is under the Athabasca County. The county is the owner and also an operator of the trail. When it comes to the steering committee and um, the operator, the other operator of the trail, um, I was concerned of stepping into operational uh, waters, which is why I recommended that um, the advertising, of course, come from the county, being it is under the county's grant, as well as just to maintain a list of the um, volunteers that could be forwarded on. Um, for privacy reasons, I wasn't sure how that would work. So it was something that I, um, again, didn't want, want to cross into operational waters. Um, I agree that, you know, it would be great to have a, a recent delegation. Um, <clears throat> the uh, Trail Net Society, uh, Trail, Alberta Trail Net Society has been a delegation in the county in the past. Um, and, you know, it was great information to explain exactly how everything works there. The steering committee, of course, is made up of all the municipalities that are along the trail. Um, and I, I have no issue whatsoever of, of taking it on so long as, as we're not crossing into those as a councillor crossing into operational waters. So I would just like to get uh, confirmation on that. Um, but the Athabasca County does own the trail um, and is also responsible for um, maintenance as well to what's outside of grant money that we cannot uh, get a hold of and of course would be approved by council. So it's just it's it's an overlap. The uh, Athabasca Recreational Trail Association, or, or um, they are also have a grant, but it covers different sections of the trail. So that's how it is is able to have the grant applied for by the county as well as another trail operator. Does that help at all? Okay. Further discussion, Councillor Wallach, your hand was up. 
Uh, I guess for clarification, did this come from the committee or was it a personal request? Um, this was approved by council. The grant was approved by council. And a part of that grant was uh, to hold a cleanup. Um, you should have the floor. Follow up. So did the money go directly to the county or to the committee? It would go on to the county. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other questions or discussion? Uh, Councillor Anderson, in your comments, you made words that made me think you were proposing to add an amendment to the motion that Athabasca County crews uh, collect the, the, the bags uh, that the volunteers pick up. Yes, I'd so, make that amendment. Okay. So uh, Councillor Anderson has proposed an amendment to the motion to add uh, a line that the Athabasca County uh, collect the bags at the end of the cleanup event, collect the garbage at the end of the cleanup event. And again, last call for discussion. So, Councilor Mins. We collect the, the bags of garbage and stuff like that. So we'll take them, uh, so the county will take them up to the regional uh, transfer station and they will pick up the cost for, for these in, bags. In my opinion, depends how many bags there are. There's a bin there and there's probably one across the street at the public works area. Okay. Uh, Councilor. Wallach and then Hall. Um, I guess for another clarification, the grant money, where does that go? What is the specific um, expenses associated with that? Uh, signage is the majority of it. Um, to update all of the old signage and to add the, uh, ensure that the non off, off highway vehicles are not to be on the trail. So that signage was was purchased through the grant and there was $180 as mentioned here left over to do the cleanup. And of course, if there are tipping fees or, or whatever is needed for that, that certainly can be set aside through that $180 if that is a requirement. Okay. Has everybody had a fair chance to speak on that? Coach Cromwell, very quiet. Um, on the adoption of the amendment to direct Athabasca County or to, to direct Athabasca County crews to uh, collect the uh, garbage bags collected and dispose of them, all is in favor. That motion is adopted nine and zero. On the other uh, four, I'm gonna request a split of the question because it's four separate items. And I think then that kind of addresses some of the, gives us a chance to deal with it. Um, so on the question of the adoption of the motion to advertise on all available communication avenues, a trail care spring cleanup event for the Trans Canada Trail on June 3rd from 9 to 1 with the main cleanup area to be in the hamlet of Collington and the meeting place to be at the Athabasca Landing Trail. All in favor. That is adopted 9 and 0. On the uh, motion to send an invitation to the event to the Athabasca Recreational Trails Association. All those in favor? That is adopted eight and one, sorry, seven and two, and that motion is carried. On the question of the motion to direct the administration to maintain a list of volunteers who wish to take part in the event and forward it on June 1 to the trail steering committee members who will be leading the event. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, okay. All those opposed? Four, five, and that motion, uh, is defeated, the count is four uh, and five. And on the adoption of the motion to lend any PPE, such as vests, garbage picking tools, if available, and to be, which will be returned to admin after the event, all those in favor. That motion is adopted nine and zero and is carried. The next item of business on the agenda is calendars. Boy, this is... We haven't even had a morning coffee yet. And uh, <clears throat> so um, the uh, first items that I can share, you received an email yesterday, the uh, Water North meeting for the 11th was canceled. Um, the Reeve uh, and chair of the Water North Chair of the Water North Group and Reeve Grand Prairie County is uh, Mr. Bob Marshall. He phoned last week and said, do you think it'd be a good idea to proceed with this? Uh, I think that was really courtesy. I spoke with the two uh, council members who are connected to that committee. 
and they agreed that uh, given the state of affairs in the province, we should support our, our neighbours uh, and not ask them to come visit for a meeting on that day. Anyway, the, the uh, executive of the Water North uh, cancelled the meeting to be rescheduled at a later date, so you can mark that off in your calendar. Um, that's all I actually have in May to share with you. Uh, the June 1 um, tri-council meeting with Boyle, Bondis, and Miwatha, I think we have to strike that date. And my understanding is Ms. Blair is working with the summer villages to find a, another date that would be suitable. I spoke to Mayor Clark the other day, and there was no real days in early June that, that worked for anyone on her council, partly because of prior commitments. Uh, it's a three-member council. One of them was recently elected in a by-election, and they just, prior to the election, had a number of uh, those weekend dates scheduled away. So uh, Ms. Blair is working on new dates for that. And I think uh, times closer to the end of June were suitable for the Summer Village folks. I also think maybe the Milwaukee Council um, found they had a conflict closer to that date now as well. Are there other... Councillor uh, Chemsic. FCSS June 5th. Okay. Councillor Holland and then Councillor Anderson. Thank you. We have community transportation on May 11th at 10 a.m. And June 8th, we have the Athabasca Landy Trail meeting at 9.30. And I'll just extend an extremely happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers out there on May 14th. Sorry, can you repeat the 8th was trails? Yep. The um, May or June 8th, pardon me, is the trails at 9.30. Community transportation at 10 on May 11th, and happy Mom's Day on May 14th. Councillor Anderson, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, I would like to call a Regional Emergency Advisory Committee meeting for May 23rd at 6 p.m. And if any of our fellow councillors have been reading the emergency plan lately and found any amendments that they would like to recommend, please forward them along because that meeting will be coming up for that purpose. Okay, that's the uh, Regional Emergency Advisory Committee at 6 p.m. on May the 23rd. Councillor Bullock. Uh, June 9th, the Farm Women's Meeting, Farm Women's Conference. If it's Farm Women's Conference Meeting, planning meeting on June 9th. Councillor Gerlich or Capitanic? Um, we don't have all the flexible to do that yet, right? <laughs> okay. yeah. Councillor Crumwell? Uh, yeah. Councillor Mins? So the, do we, is everybody okay with the, the amendments or do you want me to review what I've noted? Councillor Anderson? Move to approve the calendars as amended. Councillor Anderson has made a motion to approve the calendars as amended. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that is carried. While not something that needs to be added to our calendar, I'll tell you that uh, I want to share there's a meeting on June 1st for uh, the bike. There's a there's a community group in town that's working on a bike trail, mountain bike trail uh, park in the uh, Muskeg Creek Valley. And so... Um, it's a community group un, unrelated to our council, but uh, you know certainly they can always use support if you're able to go. That happens the first Thursday of each month. The next item of business on the calendar or on the agenda is item 11. I, I added 11.1 to the agenda specifically because uh, I'd hope to bring to your up for your discussion what it is we expect and and want to achieve with this section of the agenda. Um, what information, what standards will we, you know, maybe do we want to talk about to, to make sure the information conveyed in here adds value. There's some items that when I look at them, um, my first thought is, you know, why is this in our package? It doesn't convey a lot of information. Um, you know, the, the section is called reports, not minutes and agendas from other organizations and so I 
I wanted to put it in front of you for a discussion and then we can uh, can move on but the the um, my assumption is that you know there'd be reports on the things that are that are in there if there's um, if they're going to be in there at all um so because there's no clear motion I, I wanted to just open the the uh, the floor up and and I mean I guess I'll lead that by adding you know greater north minutes have been included but on a regular basis I provide updates after every meeting and so now we have minutes from two meetings ago that have been reported on months ago that are that are old and in the agenda where you know the report has has already been been provided and I'm not really sure that those minutes particularly add a lot of value and um and I do have a report for you in that section later on so Councillor Holland your thoughts thank you um the agenda is not only just for council it is also for the public and the public then are able when they have questions or they, they want to hear about more information from some of these committees that to be able to go back to an agenda that is online and say here are your minutes um this will be very helpful if you have any further questions please reach out and so i know i've directed quite a few people to the agendas uh packages because it is full of really good information and i believe that the minutes are extremely helpful i for one have gone back to 1985 for the trail in minutes and gotten a pile of information that i needed for to be able to understand how the trail works etc cetera, etc cetera. so um i believe that the minutes whether they're two months old or two weeks old or brand new are very beneficial to have as a public record i think that that's amazing um the written reports i think is also extremely important rather than always verbal because again it gives that the public the record of what actually happened and what was said so for me um on the public side of the of the of the fence i think these are extremely important to maintain other comments thoughts councillor anderson Thank you. Um, I noticed that the Pembina River zone minutes were included, and it is inappropriate to have those minutes included in this agenda package. The Pembina River meetings are for members only. Some of the presentations and delegations that are shared there are not, that's not a public meeting. That information would be sometimes covered under the POIP Act if they were being shared with anybody other than the members at that meeting. And uh, that's why I try to pr provide a written summary or my own verbal updates or reports on those meetings is so that there's a general overview of what was discussed, but not disclosing information that would be otherwise for members only. Um, so I'm not sure why that was included in this agenda package, but I'd really like to see that not done in the future. Yeah, Other comments? Once first, I'm going to. Um, Councilor Grillick, thoughts about how to make this valuable information? <clears throat> Councilor Kapitanik, your hand is waving. Well, um, I don't, I, uh, on printed agendas, I think it is an extremely um an extreme abuse of paper um but i don't i don't disagree that having minutes for other committees available uh to easily access uh for the public and for ourselves um is a bad thing if they are open meetings that are committees of this county um and so um i would suggest perhaps that they are not printed in the agenda is that seem like is that easier on admin or uh, I'll direct this to the CAO or or not easier? CAO? Certainly all of the information <laughs> that is provided is provided in the digital form these mm -hmm. days. So uh, any considerations in terms of cost or wasting paper certainly isn't the case unless somebody asks for a printed copy of the agenda package. It's information that is public information. Oftentimes administration gets requests from residents for uh, this type of information. So if it's readily accessible, then it just uh, gives that opportunity to those residents to find the information they're looking for instead of having to make the request. So 
I think goes to the heart of open and transparent government, which I think this council believes in. I follow up. Yeah, yeah before. Um, I, I thank you very much. I, I agree with that. Um, I guess I was just referring to the printed agenda packages that we have at our meetings. So if anybody is uh, concerned about that, then I guess it would be up to you to request to not have those minutes printed in your package. I use the digital one. Uh, Councillor Wallach, your hand was up, then Councillor Means on deck. Yeah, just I guess my question is most of these committees and stuff post their stuff on their on their own website. So why do we have to print it on ours? Councillor Means. Um, I I feel like it this way that uh, the minutes go into the agenda. Whether you get your print uh, agenda printed or not, it's it's if you want if you if you don't get your agenda printed and you want something printed, just ask for it. Um, everybody that gets their agenda printed usually wants it, right? So, but the other thing is I, I like throwing the minutes in of the meetings that I've attended, not just for even for councils. Uh, I like the idea of, of the public getting it also, but also for council. And then if council wants to ask any questions, they can uh, they can ask the questions to the people that uh, have went to that that meeting and and uh, and hopefully can be answered. But um, sometimes doing a verbal report just sends you right back through the meeting and and uh, it's it's virtually right there. So go ahead and ask. That's why that's why I put the meeting minutes in. Councilor Chanzu. I think some of our. Um committee meetings the minutes are quite lengthy i'm not opposed to the idea i mean if a counselor wants to take the time and just highlight those key variables uh right afterwards or before the minutes um would be highly affected uh, effective um <clears throat> i like the minutes in the agenda personally um i feel that it's important but uh you know it's also not too bad just to do a quick highlight sheet as well just a thought um, we'll, we'll loop around a second time, but I'll give Councillor Cromwell the opportunity to speak first. Thank first. you. Uh, I agree with Councillor Mims, and I think there's value in having the printed agendas in there. Yes, our partner agencies put them on their own websites, but we're trying to make things easy for the public to know what's going on and be able to have that information available and having, you know, up in excess of 20 different links they'll have to go to search for is a little bit unkind when we have the ability to put it in here. That is where your written reports and your verbal updates can come from afterward. But I have no problem with having agendas from meetings attached to our agenda. Councillor Gerlich, you're the only one that hasn't spoken the first time. Do you want to speak or? No pressure. I just, before I start a second time, I want to give you the opportunity. Okay. Councillor Holland, you had your hand up uh, Thank you. for seconds. I, I guess I'm just a little bit concerned about um, limiting information to the public. For example, as you mentioned, the um, Pembina Zones is not a public meeting, it's for members only. However, the public purse pays the councillors to attend. Um, and so I would think that they should have a vested interest. If there is FOIP concerns, that can easily be redacted. Um, so. I, I just think that we are here to serve the public. Not all the websites share these minutes. Um, I know I've been looking for a few committees minutes in different websites and haven't been able to find them. So um, I guess in, in, I agree very much with, with what Councilor Cromwell said as well. Um, we need to be as transparent as possible and we need to be available and serving the public as easily and as accessible as possible. And if, if it takes to add a few uh, minutes from our committee meetings that the public has entrusted us to be at, um, I think it's extremely important that we provide the service and we provide the transparency to them. Uh, Councillor Kapitanik, second mm -hmm. round. Uh, yeah, and I would just actually like to add that um, the minutes for me are the most trustworthy account of what happens at that meeting. So as much as a verbal or written can be uh, sufficient, um, we're all human and our memories do fail us as we age. And I know myself, there's been times when I couldn't even remember 
exactly who had missed this committee meeting or who was there or wasn't and being able to go back to the minutes and have that um like 100 percent record of the meeting was valuable to me so i would like to keep them any other comments second time council cromo you sound like you're chomping at the bit I just wanted to uh, thank Councillor Kapitanik for reminding us that we're getting older. I, I feel that every morning when I look at the added white in my beard, so I appreciate that early morning reminder. So I think that's been a good discussion, and we should, uh, you know, move toward a motion. I, I think, you know, appreciate that we could take a minute and discuss sort of what standard do we want to do? Do we want to achieve as a group? Um, and I, I agree with uh, comments have been made by colleagues that being transparent is, is critical. I don't necessarily agree that throwing a copy of minutes in the agenda is transparency. Transparency for me is about conveying useful information. And so, you know, we, there's, a, you know, at least three items in the, in the package today that when you look at them, there's really not any useful information in that package. And so, I think where I was hoping we'd think about going to is the idea that, yeah, we need to provide reports, we need to provide information and the minutes, but if we're going to put the minutes in that we're prepared to make some comments to it. And, you know, if I were to draw your attention to 11.1 AE, there's really not a lot in that item that, and without picking on any, picking on them, but without meaning to, you know, slander them, there's not a lot of useful information in that document. And so for me, that doesn't tell me anything except for they had a they had a presentation and they approved some minutes. And it's it's um to me that's a supporting document to you know a, a couple of a, to a to a couple of comments that say we had presentations on these topics and here are three things I learned. To me, that's the transparency and accountability that people are paying us for, not shoving in an agenda or a, a set of minutes that again, don't convey enough to, to write a byline, let alone a newspaper article. So that would be my view, if I speaking a second time. is um, There's a recommended motion in the report. Do we want to make any changes to, you know, so to the standard to expect a, a report if you're going to put something in? Do we want to leave things as they are? Um, the floor is open to make a motion. So first of all, Councillor Gerlich, is your hand up or? Okay. It's half up. Half, yeah. Like, I think the percentage of people that would be, like, I like the idea of transparency and all that. I think the percentage of people that would be taking the opportunity to look at stuff up would be pretty minute. And I personally never looked before. Uh, but I don't know. I, I'm not too concerned about how we do this one way or the other. Okay. Councillor Anderson, Councillor Chamzik. Thank you. Um, for a lot of these committees, I feel like the minutes, you also need the agenda to add context. And so I would rather work as a committee member to improve, say, for example, the multiplex. I'll, I'll use that because I'm the chair of that committee. I would rather the county spent the time linking you know, creating links so that people can easily find where the minutes are stored, maybe under our committee listing or whatnot, people can just click there, but then they can look through all, they can easily find all the minutes and all the agenda packages in that one place that's maintained by the committee or the society versus the county trying to include everything in the agenda, in our agenda packages, because a lot of the times, if I look up something in the minutes, I also need the agenda to add context. And so I would rather us at this table include links where people can find the information, but as a committee member, encouraging all of our committees to make that information more accessible in that kind of format so people can look it up that way. If Councilor Chamzik then Holland on deck. I just have a question. On average, how many agendas are actually printed outside of this room? for public and stuff to... So I think the question is, do we print agendas for members of the public to come pick up? Very rarely. Okay. And in the room, there's probably two, three. 
Uh, so Councillor Holland's on deck then, or sorry, Councillor Holland has the floor, Councillor Capitano on deck. Um, as much as I like the idea of having the links, um, I'm concerned that some of this information with some of these committees, historical especially, gets lost. Um, if those links get broken or if the society changes or the operator changes or something makes is, is a change, we're going to lose that historic value. And as I mentioned, just in learning for the trail is a perfect example. There's so many questions about the trail. Um, I was able to go back into our records right through back to 1985. And so if anybody needs that history, I think it is very important that the county is a uh, steward of the public documents that that uh, are very important to how our operations and our and for that matter the committees that we serve on are looked after. Okay. Councillor uh, Kapitanek, you have. The... I'd like to make a motion. Okay. I would like to review our uh, expectations and uh, recommendations for how we deal with reports versus agendas at our organizational meeting in October. Okay. and create a standard at that time when our committees are appointed. Councilor Kapitanek has moved that we review uh, we review the expectations for how uh, council deals with uh, standards for reporting on committees at the organizational meeting yeah. in October. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none on the adoption on the question is on the adoption of the motion to uh, direct to, to review expectations for how council deals with the standards for reporting on committees at the organizational meeting. All those in favor? Opposed? And the uh, count is eight and one. The motion is adopted. Item number. 11.1 C, Councillor Cromwell, do you have a report? Uh, thank you. As I stated at the beginning of the meeting, I will have a written submission for both the crime conferences for the next agenda. It was not able to get in on the deadline and a quick verbal will not do justice for the meeting. So I'll have that to Ms. Blair. I, I note in the minutes there, there's no uh, record of how the votes are carried or if they're carried even at all when we read the, or the minutes just 11.1 F, Aspen Regional Water Services Commission. Um, I added that because when I read the minutes, I had a question whether one of the directors could provide some detail on the regional rate analysis that's noted on page 86 of the agenda. So, what are we looking for? Members, members reviewed the regional rate analysis and discussion ensued. Is that under the commission's report? Uh, it's on the commission's on page uh, asset ownership and governance review. It says members reviewed the regional rate analysis and discussion um, ensued. Of our agenda. This is this is for me why just throw on the agenda. It's not correspondent. But I'm curious about the regional rate analysis because we just we just uh, the the commission just uh, did a lot of work on that in the last six months and made some real big progress. And I'm curious where it's headed and if there's any changes coming. Council members, I'm looking for notes right now. If you have anything first, jump in. Mr. Reeve, if I could uh, yeah. take my leave of the council table, I've got a file in my office. I could uh, get that Absolutely. information and provide that to council. Would anybody feel uh, it's in order to to break for five minutes or, or 10 minutes personal convenience, and then we'll, we'll come back? And okay. there's not a lot left that I was actually hoping to... I was hoping to go through and, and end at the closed session items, but I think let's come back uh, 10 minutes from now. So at 25 minutes past 10.
It is 25, we're ready with the mic. Uh, it's 25 minutes after and we're uh, like to reconvene the county council meeting where we uh, broke for the brief recess. Uh, we were talking about 11.1F. Uh, there was a question regarding the regional rate analysis discussion that uh, was reported in the minutes of the Water Commission. Councilor Mins, or sorry, Councilor Cromwell, you, uh, you were going to speak to that. So that discussion uh, revolved around hiring a consultant to conduct an asset ownership operational governance review, which may include operational assets, completion of utility master plan, uh, municipal asset evaluations, uh, hire a consultant to undertake activities, which may include stakeholder consultation, supporting plans and studies, development of agreement, development of amendments, bylaws, uh, project specific research and administration, and may also include a member rate analysis to come forward at another time. Thank you. Um, Councilor Mins. Uh, next item on there was the landing trail steering committee. There's an agenda in there, but there's no minutes or I wasn't sure if there was a report to go with that agenda. So the agenda being on page 89, I'm not sure why the agenda was added. No, me either. That's right. Um, the minutes are not complete yet for that particular meeting. Um, I didn't have a pile of time. I have a lot to talk about with regards to this, but I'll try and keep it brief. Um, so TrailNet, just to confirm, Alberta TrailNet is not the trail operator. So people need to understand the difference. They um, do not involve themselves with that, but they are a supporting uh, member. So it is up to the municipalities um, to maintain their trails. And if they have a trail operator, that's fantastic that they can work with. But the county is the owner of that trail and um, should be, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's an amazing um, asset that we have in our community to have 55 kilometers of trail. Um, of course, some of it is still being worked on and, and being opened, and that is a, a long-term process. Um, I have spent a lot of time digging into the history, figuring out where all the information comes from. I've just recently received a document um, that I from TransCanada Trail that explains all about the registration of the trail, um, what the trail uses are, um, because we are having trouble with uh, use on the trail that is uh, motorized, then it is a non-motorized trail, and I, the documentation finally came through for that, so I've been asking for administration to help me with um, bylaw interpretations so that enforcement can be done. There's a couple of different bylaws that we do have, one under parks and recreation, recreational trail areas, or not, pardon me, not trail areas, recreational areas, as well as um, our off-highway vehicles. Um, and part of parcel of that may be more signage is required to make sure that people understand that it's not only ATVs that are not allowed on the trail, but motorized vehicles aren't allowed on the trail either, as we were, as we have learned that there's been some issue with that because of a bridge that was currently out. Um, the trail does go, of course, up further into the, the as includes the Peace River Trail. Um, the trail operator, Athabasca Recreation Trail Association, did receive a $28,000 grant uh, recently for more gravel to be um, improving that particular trail. Um, there is, of course, we mentioned the $1,000 TCT grant here um, for cleanup as well as for the signage. The town of Athabasca and their portion of the trail, which I believe is about three kilometers, they're looking at a bit of a revamping um, of the where the trail goes to uh, enhance a bit of a loop, um, but they've also received a $1,200 grant there on that portion of the trail for uh, mulching, um, garbage pickup, and that kind of thing, which the uh, the town is is looking after um, as far as their maintenance is concerned. Um, and again, I'm I'm not prepared to to go into complete and total details because I could talk about this forever. Um, there is a master plan for the summary on the trail. Um, there is discussion right now on e-bikes um, being, is that something that will be included in the use? So there may be some uh, further consultation there to determine if that is something that will be added. Um, of course, and that also includes wheelchair um, and whatnot um, to go with that. Um, there is a huge action list of incomplete actions that have been going on for very many years on the trail. And it's been really unfortunate that um, 
it has been let go for this long. So there's action items that are dating back into 2012, 2014, 2013. Um, and the steering committee um, has been working extremely hard in uh, bring, bringing some closure to those action items. Um, we also, of course, are aware that the $50,000 grant for opening up between the design and uh, look of that, the planning of what it looked like between Perryvale and Rochester. Um, so that's coming up this summer. And as well, there needs to be some signage design um, with regards to the bridge opening in Collinton for uh, the Wilfong Bridge, where they have been very um, generous in their donation. Um, so that, that will be coming as soon as we can get that sign designed and created. So there's a lot of work that's going on, a lot of positive, and um, it's been bringing international uh, notice from, uh, you know, attention from different uh, people who've uh, walked the trail, looking for the trail, more and more people are asking about the trail. So I think it's something that is really beneficial to our community and hopefully we'll be seeing some events on that soon once we can get some of these action items looked after things updated and and back up to where they should be um councillor holland I, the i had a question just there's a comment about uh, meeting with councils or the terms of reference and the mous do you know sort of a timeline for when this council might expect to no, there isn't a timeline as it is right now. There is um, people that are currently working on it. I'm not one of the people that are working on that, but it is being um, moved forward um, to make sure that everything, like I say, is is brought up to speed. So it, as as things progress, it'll be brought forward. Cool. Thank you. 11.1 W. Since the um, last council meeting, the Greater North Foundation Board has met. And uh, at the last meeting, the 2022 financial statements were approved. The financial statements are of uh, the foundation are split into two parts. There's the the uh, housing portion that that you have uh, earlier in the agenda package, and then there's the complete organization because they also operate uh, some subsidized housing in addition to the seniors um, seniors housing. And for uh, legislative reasons and the way the grant funding works, uh, the way requisitions are calculated, those are are. Uh, kept separate and then consolidated for, for year end. Um, the requisition was approved and forwarded out to all the municipalities. So Director Chernichin at the county and um, all the other uh, 13 other municipalities have received that copy for 2023 for inclusion on the tax notice. One of the things that has come up uh, at the board level that I think is worth repeating that where there's maybe a little bit of um, misunderstanding, the Greater North Foundation is not an arm, an entity, or an affiliate of any municipality. It is a standalone organization, very much like the Alberta School Foundation. And so it's not something that um, is controlled by individual councils. Um, as a result of you know, a fair bit of work by the by the board, 13 of 14 municipalities approved the uh, the starting of a capital replacement reserve study, as you may recall. In January of 2022, Athabasca County Council um, passed a motion to support that. Um, however, uh, one municipality uh, was didn't pass a motion approving that by the the deadline for sending out requisitions. They had a few additional questions that um, that they wanted to to discuss. And so as a result of that, there's no capital replacement reserve uh, funds in the 2023 requisition um, because it can't proceed without, um, basically without the, the unanimous consent of all the municipalities. Uh, the foundation board is going to proceed with the capital replacement reserve study because it's the responsible governance uh, thing to do. And uh, the study itself, I think will um, help to alleviate some of the questions that the, the one municipality had. And uh, the board is going to continue to work with that municipality to address their concerns. Uh, a meeting has been scheduled for, um, an offer to, to meet with them has been scheduled for June. The other uh, bits that <clears throat> are uh, important to, to know, a number of months ago, the MD of Bonneville made a request to the minister to, to um, shift the the requisition uh, within their municipality uh, for the area formerly covered by ID 349 from the Greater North Foundation to a, uh, a different foundation. 
and uh, of course uh, most other municipalities in the that are that are members of the foundation sent letters of strong opposition to the minister and the minister uh, very clearly rejected that um the uh the history on that is in the last couple of years i'd have to look back on the dates uh bonneville uh, annexed part of id 349 lacklebish county annexed part of id 349 and uh, part of the the order permitting them to do that was that the foundation requisitions on those lands stayed stayed where they were, and so um, the uh, the rep from Bonneville was there, and um, there was a good conversation, and and I think some of the some of the initiation of that maybe was rooted in a, a minor misunderstanding um, on on the, the ability for the municipality to put their own hands on those funds, where it's it of course isn't the case. Uh, foundation requisitions would need to go to either one foundation or another. So that's the report from Greater North. Uh, joint Rec Committee. Councillor Anderson? Thank you. I just have a quick yep. question regarding the Greater North Foundation. Yes. Um, as the Capital Replacement Reserve was not established this fiscal this year um because not all the municipalities have signed on can you just explain a little bit about so if something major was to happen to one of these buildings tomorrow um the funds obviously there's no reserve currently there's a very very minor very small reserve in place that's just been sort of surpluses and and a little bit that's been set aside over decades. okay so if you ran into a situation that like what the multiplex is currently facing with boilers down and fairly extreme costs coming our way um you can't even truly apply for grant funding to cover half of it because you don't have it, uh, a reserve of it would be capacity. unlikely to qualify for grant funding um any of the matching funds that exist would be challenging because there are no matching funds in general uh so the options that would exist for the foundation would be to borrow the money and then those loan payments would become part of the operating budget and and then they would they would themselves bake into the requisition but it's it's certainly not a responsible way to govern and um so the the other I'm not really uh, deeply worried that uh, that there'll be a problem getting the reserve in place in the future. Of course, what happens is um, every year we wait, we have fewer years, we have to collect the same amount of money over fewer years. So um, it, it will have some impact, but it's heading in the right direction. But today, if there was a major, a major problem, um, no, it would, there would be certainly challenges. One of the typical municipal responses historically has also been just let us know then and we'll give you the money. And that actually doesn't work. If, for example, a major capital item were need to, needed to be repaired, um, you can't re requisition that in a single year. You have to requisition it over the life of the item. So suppose we had to buy a 20 year item, all the boilers or all the shingles or you know something that was non-insurable or um, building envelope type issues, uh, the foundation would likely speculatively be required to borrow the money and then again, collect it back over the, the, the lifespan of that loan or the asset. Thank you for clarifying that. Councilor Mintz. So what you're kind of saying is, is, is uh, municipalities have no governance over over the uh, housing commission here, other than than the municipalities have to pay have, uh, requisitions allotted and, to them, they have to pay, and, it. and that actually and, is and, just and, and now just wait, wait, just wait, and now all of a sudden we have one municipality that says they're not going to agree to this, and it's like. Who, who who has control here? Like like all of a sudden, well, it, control and governance. Um, so the. The reason the municipalities have to uh, consent uh, is because of a ministerial order. I can't reference the number, but I could follow up with you on that. And it's, I, and I don't know the history on the when that MO came into place, but the, uh, so the municipalities don't, what was the first thing you said? They don't have control well they don't have governance or no the right and so the the foundation is a separate entity and so they're yeah and one of the municipalities had this idea that they they should be able to influence how it 
you know, sort of participate in the governance. Um, the foundation doesn't take municipal money. And, and that's the thing that's really important to have everybody clear on. It doesn't take municipal money. It doesn't affect Athabasca County's tax rate. It affects the tax rate that is charged in the county because we have municipal taxes, uh, school foundation, and housing foundation. So all three add up, and that's the rate we charge. But but it doesn't it it doesn't impact our budget. It's it's flow through money in the same way that the school school foundation we collect money on behalf of the school foundation and we write a check on on to them. And yeah. the housing foundation works the same way. Technically, it's possible to have the foundation collect that requisition um, without the consent of all parties. But what has to happen is you still have to collect the amount that would have been required from all parties. So if we had, say, a single summer village who, um, I can't remember, the, the number for the impact on a couple of summer villages was less than two or $3,000 a year. It was quite small. Um, if they had said no, it would have been possible to move ahead because what would have happened is that total would have been just spread out over the other the other 13. But when you have a municipal, and because it's so minor, I mean, you you would you would not even be able to measure it in pennies, right? Like it's, uh, but when you have one of the more significantly sized municipalities saying we're not quite ready to make that decision, and I mean it's it's frustrating because you know the it's been something the board's been working on with the municipalities for for a year. Formal letters went out in the fall. Um, but we, you know, the, the board will continue to work with them and it's uh, and to do the education that's necessary so they feel comfortable with uh, with what's happening and the why and and their role and and um, you know and I think it's absolutely fair that once the study is done that you know it, it uh, certainly something that the councils will be able to see and the board, as far as I can tell, again I can't speak entirely for them, but my sense is there would be no questions about. The willingness to to come and talk about this is what we've planned um and ultimately they're doing what athabasca county is starting to do with our asset management plan we're trying to figure out what the long-term needs are so that we can have money set aside when when those things happen or what any small condo what any condominium corporation has to do um they're required to have a plan for reserves you're not required to to fully fund it you're just it's just important to have a plan and it's possible, you know, the board will make choices around, we want to be fully funded by X date. We want to be partially funded by X date, but, but today, if there were a, an opportunity to even attach, atta attach some grant money for energy saving, which the last number that I remember, you know, was 60 to $70,000 a year in carbon tax. If there's a way they can, improve their energy use and reduce that tax because that tax is again coming from our ratepayers. So it's um you know it makes sense to 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 look at all the opportunities to to run more efficiently. And and I'm uh can you know tell you I'm I'm proud of the um the management of the foundation in terms of how lean they run. When you compare our foundation requisition to most other ones in the vicinity they they do really run quite lean right now it's uh, 11 or 12 dollars per hundred thousand worth of assessment compared to 33 in one of our neighbors 120 in another um where you know the 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 management team there uh we're fortunate as a municipality to have such a outstanding management team and that's management team joint rec committee Good question. Thanks for the uh, Councillor Anderson or Capitanic. Did you have anything to report? Uh, Mike. All right. Uh, we had a meeting on April 26th. A few of the highlights are their arena ice, of course, is out for the season and they're starting up slow pitch and minor ball and uh, all that kind of stuff. The spray park is scheduled to be turned on just after May long and the health inspector has uh, requested to be there when they turn it on just to check the water and make sure everything's good. Uh, AHS has also identified some issues with the commercial dishwashers not being up to 
not getting up to the appropriate temperature. So uh, there may be some repairs and whatnot required. Otherwise, everything's going really good. I have to commend the village for the way that they manage the recreation facilities in the Boyle area. Um, one of the items that we learned at this meeting was the arena has seen a reduction in utility costs over the last year, thanks to steps taken by the Village of Boyle and the Municipal Energy Manager. And that those that reduction is estimated to um, equate to nearly 30% reduction for utility costs for the arena for the 2024 budget. So fairly substantial savings there in a year when everybody's utility costs are going through the roof. And I just think they really, really, um, deserve commendment for taking those steps to ensure that they're doing the best they can. I was impressed by that, actually, given all the utility bills we see. So um, any questions? Councillor Minns, your hand is up, then Councillor Chams, go on deck. So being that they're, they're uh, saving so much money at the Boyle Arena, is there anything, are they working together with our multiplex to be able to maybe work together and, and uh, see what's how they're how they're uh, working together? I, I don't know. Just save money. Come um, soon. I Come soon. sorry. I believe that the uh, same energy manager manager uh, was in charge of all of the programs that are recreational facilities. And Mr. Jacobs. Mr. Jacobs, thank you. So whatever recommendations that he gave to Boyle, they have uh, likely implemented well. And it, it all depends on your starting point too. Um, Councillor Chancellor. I was just wondering with AHS in the kitchen uh, dishwasher identified, would the Fortis grant be applicable to upgrading to high efficiency? Maybe it's something to look into. I know like they have that LED um, lighting, but I know I feel very positive that appliances also fit underneath there as well. I'm not sure, but I will forward those comments along and Good See. takeaway. Okay. Thank you. Um, any further questions? I had, uh, I put 11.1 Z on uh, specifically the note I had was to comment that the chair was working to schedule another meeting of the regional committee that's been addressed in calendars. So I don't think there's any more to say there unless the chair has other comments. Uh, regional health recruitment committee council walk. Yeah, so uh, this week is national nurses week. So the committee has, uh, given $10 gift cards to uh, Life Scenes Practical Nurses and registered nurses in the area. So, and then Appreciation Day is they're planning a uh, breakfast and boil, uh, no date quite yet. And then they'll be doing a barbecue like they did last year on the riverfront on June 9th from 11 to 2.30. And if anybody has any contacts for three bedroom houses in Athabasca, please pass them along. <laughs> Three-bedroom three houses. And that is it. Item 11.1 AE, uh, that was on just to share the call from uh, Reeve Marshall and the meeting was canceled. I don't know if Councillor Cromwell is a member. Did you have anything else you wanted to add on the Water North? Nothing to add. Unfortunately, the last meeting that I was in attendance at was via Zoom and the quality was absolutely horrible for all online participants. So as Councillor Mims will attest, uh, they're not the greatest electronically. So we were very much looking forward to having that in-person meeting, but we understand our issues our partners are having and we support them in the rebooking of that meeting. Uh, Pemina River, Councillor Anderson, do you have any other comments on that? Given the Zoom? Anything to add to your prior comments? Well, I guess um, my biggest comment, what I'll start by, um, this was my first meeting, the April 24th meeting as the chair of the Pemina River Zone. The meeting went quite well. I'm very thankful to Athabasca County's administrative team who've taken over the administrative duties of the zone. Um, we are actively working to prepare for the next meeting already. And actually when I talked to Ms. Plurd this morning, um, it sounds like she almost has it ready to go already. The delegations are wrapped up, are, confirmed and whatnot. So we are really looking forward to utilizing that opportunity to build connections. 
that can help strengthen Athabasca County. July 17th. July 17th. July 24th. So July 24th. Sorry, it's um, the next meeting July 17th and the 24th. July 24th is okay. the next meeting. The minutes say the 17th. And again, I just have concerns with the meeting minute being placed in our agenda packages um, as they are more of a transcript for those who weren't able to attend. And the presenters give those presentations with the understanding that it's for members only. So some of that would be covered under FOIP. I'll make sure. Okay, um, it would be in order to receive a motion to, sorry, Councillor Holland, do you have a question? Yeah, I just have a quick sorry. question. Um, being that this is a members only um, committee, um, et cetera, how much administrative time is actually going into looking after this? Mr. Reeve, uh, through the chair to Councillor Holland, not very much at all. Okay. It's uh, fairly, probably takes about two hours only. And then uh, about the four hours during the meeting when they attend to take the minutes. So okay. not a big imposition. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. So, so I'm looking for a motion to accept the reports. So moved. Councilor uh, Cromwell has uh, moved. We accept the reports for information. All those in favor? That is carried nine and zero. The motion is adopted. It would be appropriate to have a motion to enter closed session. Councillor Capitanic has moved. We move to the closed session portion of the meeting. All those in favor? That is carried nine and zero. The motion to go closed is adopted and we'll give.
It is in order to receive a motion to leave closed session. Councillor Cromwell has moved uh, that council leave the closed session. All those in favor? That uh, vote is 9-0, the motion is adopted. Regarding item 12.1, uh, Councillor Anderson. Thank you. I move to approve staff to enter into discussions with the landowners adjacent to bridge pile 79225 to discuss options that do not require a bridge replacement, including offering the road allowance under the condition that access requirements for the landowners are maintained. Councillor Anderson has moved that county uh, that the council directs approve staff entering into discussions with the landowners adjacent to 79225 to discuss options that do not require a bridge replacement, including offering the road allowance under the condition that access requirements are maintained. Is there any further discussion? Seeing not, none. If you're ready for the question, all those in favor. Councillor Gerlach, how did you vote? I voted in favor. Okay. The count is nine and zero and the motion is adopted. Regarding item 12.2, Councillor Mins, you had a motion. I do have a motion and I'm sure it's probably not going to be read exactly the same as what uh, the, the recording secretary has. So if I can get the motion okay. read out. It, um, Councilor Mins has moved or indicated that you would cause to be moved, uh, that we would direct admin to schedule presentations with the executive search firms identified by council in closed session. On Saturday, or Saturday, May 30th. On May 30th. Tuesday, May 30th at 9.30 a.m. starting. Okay. Is there any further discussion? So on the question of the adoption of the motion to uh, direct admin to schedule presentations with the top, sorry, with the executive search firms identified by council in closed session, beginning at 9.30 on Tuesday, May 30th, all those in favor? That count is nine and zero. The motion is adopted. That is the end of the meeting. Councilor Gerlich, would you move the adjournment? There we go. Councilor Gerlich has moved adjournment. The meeting is adjourned. At uh, 45.